Guys, so today we have a review for Touchstone 4, Unit 7, 8, and 9. Yeah, we finished three-fourths of the book. So in one more month, we will have finished the book. And we will continue to the next level, and it's the last level. Very close to graduation. So... This is how it goes for the news for the new guys. Um, every three units, we have an exam. The exam is for all of the skills in English, except writing. Um, in the exam, we have grammar, vocabulary, we have listening, and we have reading. And then with me, you have a speaking test. Okay. Now, on the, on the first test, the digital test, it's grammar, vocabulary, listening, reading, okay? And it's usually everything from the review, everything from unit seven, eight, nine, or everything from the three units we had just seen. So this is your time to ask me any questions or clarify any doubts that you have, okay? So even if you think it is a stupid question, please ask it because you never know. Maybe one of your classmates has the same doubt, but they are scared to ask. Let's begin with unit seven. Everybody open your book to page 67, please. I will be writing everything on the left all the important notes and things like that. So please pay attention to the screen. And if you want to, and I recommend it, take notes of what I write. Unit seven, lesson A. The objective for this lesson was um, to express Things people do for us, usually for a pay, usually for pay, or um, just persuasion. I think I I think I told you guys that um, in this lesson we have two different verbs, and they are called the causative get and have and they they express the same thing except that they have different structures let me give you an example um i always talk about this i pay a lady to clean my apartment okay let's keep it short and simple i pay a lady to clean my apartment on saturday one day a week now, how can I use get and have to express that without saying pay? There are four different ways of doing this. The first one is I get a lady to clean my apartment. The second way would be I get my apartment cleaned. And I can say by a lady. The third way would be I have my, sorry, I have a lady clean my apartment. And the last way would be I have my apartment cleaned by a lady. And I put by a lady in parentheses because it's optional. You know, it's kind of like the passive voice. It's not necessary to mention the person that does it or the thing that does the activity. You just focus on the object. In my case, I just focus on my apartment. I have my apartment cleaned. I get my apartment cleaned. It doesn't matter who cleans it. What matters is that it is cleaned. So there are three different structures and 
I'm going to tell you the first one. The, the first one is the easiest. The first one is with get in half. Get in half plus the thing and then the past participle verb. All right. Now, which two sentences, A, B, C, or D, follow this structure right here? Manu? The letter um, B and V. Yeah, exactly. B and well, I don't want to use the symbol B and D. Exactly. I get my apartment cleaned. Get apartment cleaned. I have my apartment cleaned. Get my apartment cleaned. That's good. It follows the structure to the T. Now, that is the first structure. In total, there are three. The next structure would be the most common one, probably. Get plus a person plus two verb. Get a person to do something. Get a person to do something. Which sentence follows this structure, A or C? C. C? Well, well, first of all, C doesn't have get. A? Oh, yeah, A. A, yeah. Okay. So that's good. And the third structure is have plus a person plus verb. Now, this is obviously letter C. I have a lady clean my apartment. Now, the difference between these two structures is that with get, you need to use to. You need to use to. It's an obligation. If you don't use it, it's incorrect. And with have, you do not use to. If you use to, it's also incorrect. So the only difference is that to. It's, very, it's a very particular thing, but you need to know the structure. Get person to. Have person verb. Get person to, get person to, get person to, have person verb. Repeat it to yourself a million times. And well, not a million. Repeat it to yourself like five or 10 times and it will, it will stick with you. Make a little song. Get person to, get person to, and make a little rhythm. You will remember the structure. Now, <laughs> These things right here, these four sentences mean the same thing as this one. The only difference is that I'm not specifically saying that I pay her. The reason why she does it is ambiguous. You know, it's not clear. But I pay her, okay? I pay her. So I'm going to give you a sentence like that one. Like, I pay a lady to clean my apartment. And I want you to write that sentence or this with the same meaning in four different ways. Like this. I pay my grandpa to change my oil. I pay my grandpa to change my oil. I want you to write this sentence in four different ways using the causative get and have you have two minutes it's easy okay please do it now this is your time to shine oh. no way jose everybody is here today what it's not christmas but it's a christmas miracle thank you <laughs> For coming today i'm, I'm happy when everybody is here i am the happiest honestly um so i want you to give me the same structure as letter a please karina 
Mm, I get my grandpa to change my oil. Excellent. Thank you. Donna, the same structure as letter B? Yeah. I get my oil, oil changed by my grandpa. All right. Excellent. Daniela, the same structure as letter C. I have my grandpa to change my oil. All right. Excellent. Now, look, I am really happy that you said this. Remember, we cannot put two after have a person. It's just like that. I have my grandpa change. And that's one of the most difficult things. That's the most difficult things. I notice everybody says, I have a person to da da da. But I'm telling you right now, don't make this mistake because two questions on the exam are going to have this structure. Two. Teacher, the, uh, the verb tense, it depends on the original um, sentence. Because uh, for me, it sounds a little strange uh, to the to have to put have and then change. Uh, for me, it's the same tense like, like that is uh, the infinitive but present. Um, it, it, it sounds strange, but it's correct. That's okay. correct. Yeah, it, but like you said, it depends on the it depends on the tense. You know, if I want to okay. say le pagué, I paid. In that uh -huh. case, I would change have to had. I had my grandpa change you know okay okay mm -hmm. okay so um daniela read number read the sentence again but correctly please i have my grandpa change my oil yes 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 and the last one norma i have my car's oil changed Okay, she, she added the extra word cars, but that's fine. We understand it's for the car, right? So I have my oil changed. Nice. And again, you can add compliments to make this like have more sense, you know? Oh, I have my oil changed every three months. I have my grandpa changed my oil every 10,000 kilometers, okay? Um, but that's the purpose of this grammar, to express things that other people do for us. Whether we pay them or we just talk to them, we do it. Okay. Um, and, and that's all. Do you have any questions or doubts with this? Or one, 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 one more example. One more example. All right. All right. Now, I pay, mm, let's see, I pay my sister to clean my room. I pay my sister to clean my room. Again, write the four sentences. Be very careful with have, have plus the person. Okay, you have two minutes. Benjamin, welcome to the class. Can you hear me? Can you talk today or only listen? All right. Give me the sentence with the same structure as letter A, Manu. See, um, A, I get my sister to clean my room. Excellent, sir. Um, Alberto with the structure from letter B. I get my room clean it. By my sister. Excellent. The the correct pronunciation will be cleaned with a D. Okay. Clean. Read it again, please. I get my room cleaned by my sister. Perfect. And Karina, let her see. I have my sister clean my room. Excellent. I have my sister clean my room. I'm glad you did not use two. Great. And Enrique with letter D. 
I have I have my room clean, but by my sister in this case. Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. And that's all it is, guys. And, and I don't think this type of word exists in Spanish. If you think it does, let me know. But I have not heard of any causative verbs in Spanish. Okay. All right. Benjamin says, why not cleaning? Well, man, here are the structures right here, man. I, I don't make the structures it's just that's how they are. You know what I mean? All right, guys. Well, let's continue to the next lesson. Go to page 68. All right. Unit seven, lesson B. In this unit, the objective was to, you know, express things that need to be fixed or things that need to be done. You know, usually at home or a place you go to often. There are two ways of doing this. So easy. Need plus verb ing. And also need plus to be plus the past participle. All right. Let me give you an example. In, in my house, the... How do you call it? The shower head is leaking, kind of like in, in this in this conversation right here. And I need to change it. I need to change my shower head because I'm wasting water. So this sentence right here, I need to change the shower head. If I want to make it like more how can I say, if I want to make this sound more like a, like a mission or like something that is like a necessity or a priority, I can say this, the shower head needs changing or the shower head needs to be changed. Now, in this case, you can adjust need. You can make it third person singular. You can make it simple past, whatever. But the, the verbs after it, the verb ing, it doesn't change. And neither does to be and the past participle. All right. So I want you to change this sentence. I need to wash my dog. I need to wash my dog. Make it sound like a priority. My dog, please um, write it in two different ways. You have one minute. Um, Norma, use the verb yes. ing. My dog needs washing. Needs washing. Excellent. And Karina, the the infin the passive infinitive. Uh, my dog needs to be washed. Excellent. Good, good, good. One more example. We need to clean our refrigerator. Extra D. We need to clean our refrigerator. Write that in two different ways. All right, Daniela, the first structure with the verb ing, our refrigerator. Our refrigerator needs 
needs cleaning. Yeah, it sounds a little like awkward, but it's correct. Our refrigerator needs cleaning. And Alberto, with the passive infinitive? Oh, our refrigerator needs to be clean. clean. Exactly. Our refrigerator needs to be cleaned. Exactly. The priority. Now, I want you to think about your house or maybe your neighborhood. What needs to be cleaned, changed, adjusted, replaced, recharged? I don't know, redesigned, I don't know. Think about it. Oh, what needs to be fixed? And write about that thing in two different ways, using the, using need plus verb ing and using need in the passive infinitive. Okay, make it real. Remember, the more real it is, the better it is because we connect our emotions to English and our emotions help us with our memory. Go ahead. Benjamin says, my room needs painting again. My room needs to be repainted. Nice. Okay, Enrique, your sentences, please, quickly. For example, I need to, to fix my phone. First, my, my phone needs fix it. My phone needs to be fixed. Excellent. Fixed with a T fixed. at the end. Yeah. Alberto? Oh, my TV needs fixing and my TV needs to be fixed. Okay, cool. Manu? Um, my room, my room needs remodeling and my room needs to be remodeled. <laughs> Let's see. That's a difficult word. Remodeled. Rema. Remodel. Rema. Yeah. And remodeling. Okay, remodeled. Remodeling, remodeled, remodeling. Try it again, Manu. Remodel, remodeling. Okay, read your sentences. Yes, uh, my rooms need remodeling and my rooms need to be remodeled. Remodeled, I, yes, yes, yes. Remodeled, remodeled. Rooms, it's plural. No, room. Oh, room, Only okay. Way. All right. Excellent. All right, Daniela? My room needs cleaning and my room needs to be clean. Excellent. Donna? Um, the visit room needs cleaning and the visit room needs to be clean. Okay. Um, there's a specific name for that in English. We call that the guest room. Okay, the guest room. And that's where the visitors sleep. All right, okay. so read it again, but use this new term. Um, the guest room needs cleaning and the guest room needs to be clean. Perfect, Karina? Uh, my garden needs arranging and my garden needs to be arranged. Excellent, Norma? My bedroom needs redesigning. My bedroom needs to be redesigned. Excellent, good pronunciation. All right, um, guys, I, this one is easy, I think. Do you have any questions? No. No, teacher. No, teacher. All right. Remember, whenever you want to express that it is a priority, use this grammar. Okay? It makes it sound really urgent. Really urgent. All right. Let's go. Now we're going to go all the way to unit eight. Page 77. Oh, we had fun in this class. 
All right. Unit eight, lesson A. In this one, we are imagining hypothetical, hypothetical situations about the past. Imagining hypothetical situations about the past. We do that all the time. Ah, si hubiera hecho esto, oh, si esto hubiera pasado, oh no, yo hubiera hecho esto, wey. Oh, no, no, no. You know, everybody always talks about, you know, what they would have done or how they imagine themselves in a situation, whether it's a good situation or a bad situation. And of course, we do that in English too. All right, I, I remember the, the other day, uh, I give you a story about a married couple and the man surprised the wife with a brand new Mercedes truck. And the wife was angry because she did not, you know, she didn't know about it. She, it was like, she was like in shock because he did not tell her about the purchase, but it was a surprise. This time I have a different, I have a different story for you. And, and this is also a real story. Okay. This is a real story. All right. I have a friend named Jose. He's a, he's a teacher. He's an English teacher. One day, um, he was telling us about a hard day he had, okay? He was telling us about a hard day he had. He had worked for 12 hours, and then he went home. He was exhausted. Jose has two daughters. They're young. They're like five and seven years old. Jose is like 38. So that day, that exhausting day, Jose came home, opened the door, and his two daughters came running toward him. Daddy, daddy, they said. They were happy to see their dad because they really love him. Jose, Jose was irritated and told the girls, hey, get off of me and go to your room. I want peace right now. And the girls went to their room crying. Jose's wife looked at him very upset. They had an argument. All right, this is a true story. This is a true story. Now, my question to you is, what should Jose have done? Like, what would have been the correct thing to do? He, he should have what? Give me your opinions. Give me your opinions. 
He should have he should explained have... her, uh, explained that he tired to her, uh, to her daughter, to her, his daughters. He should have explained that he was tired to his daughters. Excellent. Um, Donna, do you have another suggestion? Yeah. He should have hugged them. Oh, that's true. He should have hugged them. Excellent. Um, what else could he have done? What else could he have done? Like, what, what is another appropriate um, reaction in this situation? What's another possibility? Manu? He should, um, he should have more consideration with their daughters, hug them, and then he should rest. Okay, good. Now, I want you to use could. And remember, after have, you need to use the past participle. He could have... He could have... He could have rested. Okay. Only rested. <laughs> okay. He could have rested, but hold on. You said something really good. Oh, but it slipped from my mind. He could have... He could have a... More consideration with their daughters. And Amazing. he could... He could uh, hug, uh, hug them. Exactly. And now, finally, my question to you, everybody personally, what would you have done if you were Jose? And I want you to answer this in your notebook. I would have. I would have. Write it in your notebook, please. You have one minute. All right, Karina, what would you have done? I would have done the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. That, the other option is I would have taken them to their room. Okay, okay. Taken. Taken them, yes, taken them to, uh, to their room. Excellent, excellent. All right, Ben. Well, sorry, Ben, you can't speak. Dana, what would you have done? I will have apologized with them. Yeah, good, good. I, I'm really happy that you said apologized to them. To them. Read, it, read, read your answer again, Dana. I will have apologized to them. Nice. This seems like the right thing to do. Daniela, how about you? I will have told more about how they will feel my daughter. Uh, you would have thought more about how they feel? Yeah. Okay, consideration. Good. Manu, how about you? What would you have done if you were Jose? I would have watched it. Watched. A movie with my daughters while they eat popcorn and I sleep. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. That's a good dad right there. Alberto, how about you? I will have um, I will have explained it to them that I was exhausted and I will have promised to make up for la for last time. Oh, that's nice, nice, nice. And Enrique? Okay, uh, I will have to talk with my daughters and explain my situation. And after my, and after, okay, first take a shower, relax, and after we can play with her. With, with her. Seems logical, seems logical. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Exactly, I would have explained that I'm a little tired, give me a little time to rest and then we can play later, right? That's why it's really difficult to have kids if you are not willing willing to put them first. You know, they come first. I don't want kids for now. 
Yeah, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult. All right. Well, sorry before I before I continue. Um, the structure for this is should, could, or would plus have plus the past participle. That's all it is. Should, would, could plus have plus the past participle. In the exam, you're going to have questions with verbs that are not the past participle. And you need to know how to use the right one. The structure is right here. Would, should, could plus have plus the past participle. To talk hypothetically about the past. And each thing is different. You know, with would, it's to imagine your behavior. How would you be? Imagine yourself in that situation, the real you. And then should is like for the correct thing, you know? What is the correct thing to do? No, he should have talked to them a little. He should have played maybe for five minutes. Cool. And could is just to talk about like other possibilities. No. Um, again, he could have talked to them. He could have brought them some candy or food. I don't know, but that's how you talk about the past, hypothetically. Any questions? No, teacher. No, teacher. No. Okie dokes, okie dokes. Well, let us continue. All right, guys. Well, um, you need to know a little bit about these, these emotional intelligent words. You need to know which ones are nouns and which ones are adjectives. On the exam, I'm going to say something like, um, after their divorce, he was full of let's see aggression or aggressive and you need to choose the right word what is it going to be aggression or aggressive what is the correct answer for this one aggression aggression yeah i think i told you that after prepositions like of you need to use a noun a noun a person, place, or thing. Okay, if you say he was full of aggressive, no, 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 it's not correct. Okay, so I'm not going to really discuss that. You should, you know, do that on your own. And we're also going to, I'm also going to ask you about this speculations in the past. Now, it has the same structure as um talking hypothetically about the past but speculating is a little different remember when we speculate we make educated guesses based on evidence or past experience that's what we do we're just guessing we're not, we're never 100 sure, we're never 100% sure when we speculate. I'm going to give you um, an example. If you saw a woman walking alone, crying at three in the morning, what do you think what do you think had happened to her now there are many different ways that you can answer if you're going to use must have then that means you are very certain if you're going to use could have is like uh possible like 50 50 no and if you use may have or might have 
then it's kind of like um, less certain, you know? Like a, like a maybe, like a maybe. And the same thing for might have, less certain or like a maybe. And if you use could not have, that means it is impossible. So if you saw a woman walking alone crying at three in the morning, what do you think had happened to her? Well, maybe she could have gotten in an argument with her parents and decided to leave. That's a possibility. She could have gotten in an argument with her parents and decided to leave. Her dog could have died. She might have had too much to drink. She broke up with her boyfriend. Okay, but okay, that's good. But use the structure, please. She what? Broke, broke up with her with her boy boyfriend. Yes, she could she may have or yeah, may have. Ha she may have mm. broken. Oh my God. Broken. Mm. Broken? Yeah. With with his boy with her boyfriend. Broken up. Broken up with her with her boyfriend. But that's a possibility. It's less certain. certain. Yeah. She might have seen her boyfriend with another woman at a club or at a bar. Maybe she could have lost her cell phone. Cell phone. <laughs> you know, it, it, anything, you know, it's the possibilities are endless. You just mm, speculating. All right. So the structure is pretty much the same. Um, just that every word has its own particular meaning from very certain to impossible. And that is all. Any questions with this? None. No, we can. no. Pretty easy compared to the other ones. Let's go then. All right, with this structure, you're gonna have like three questions on the exam. So make sure that you review it, watch the video, read, check your notes, um, read the grammar charts, whatever you have to do. All right, unit nine. Go to page 86. Unit nine, lesson A. In this lesson, our objective was to report things people say, okay? This is um, really important, especially if you watch the news or if you are a fan of a celebrity. No? Oh, Coldplay said they are coming to Mexico in March. The president said that he would help the people of blah, blah, blah. Okay? It happens, you know, we watch the news and then we want to report it to our family or friends. Hey, did you hear about that? Yeah, the president said that he blah, blah, blah. We're always reporting things, always. Whether it's a, in a bad way or in a good way, we always report things. Now, the important thing about reporting speech is that you shift back the verbs, okay? Shift backs. Present to the past, past to past perfect. Um, present perfect to past perfect and past perfect 
to past perfect. It doesn't change. And will would change to would, can changes to could. So I'm going to put some direct speech and I want you to change it to reported speech. I'm in love. How can I report that, Donna? Let's say um, he said, he said he. He said he's in love. Is in love. Yeah, if I am in love in the present, you can use is. But what if I want to shift back the verb? How would I do that? Plus? Past perfect. No, not the past perfect. Right here, I'm using the verb be in the present. So I need to use it in the past over here. He said he was in love. Yeah, he said he was in love. And that sounds more, well, that sounds better. He said he was in love. Remember, when the information is still true in the present, it's optional. It's optional to shift back the verb. But it's more common to change it. All right. Another one. Um, I went to the store. He told me. Had gone. He had gone to the store. Excellent. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Manu. I will check it tomorrow. He said he. He said he. He checked. Nope. He has. Will changes to would. Uh, I'm sorry. Will. Would changes to ah, would. Ah, it's the would. He said he would check it tomorrow. Excellent. Or he said he would check it the next day. But it depends. It depends on the context. All right, Karina. I can write fast. He said he could write fast. Write fast. Excellent. All right. All right. And let's see, Alberto. I have seen it before. He told me he. He have seen. It he had. Repeat it. He have. He have seen it before. Yeah, he had seen it before. Good. 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 He told me he had seen it before. That's all it is. That's reported speech right there. Any questions? No, teacher. Very easy. Right. Um, remember, the big difference between reported speech and quoting speech is that when you quote speech, you well, you use the quotation marks and you a comma. But with reported speech, th that is not necessary. Okay. And well, that is reported speech, reporting what people say. All right. Now, uh, for exercise, no, sorry, for unit nine, lesson B, we, we talked a lot about money vocabulary. A lot of you were not here this day. So um, you should check the grammar but most importantly you should check the vocabulary all right you need to know what an allowance is you need to know what set money aside means you need to, you need to know what um how, where is that word get a loan take out a loan you need to know what all of that is because well you're all adults except donna you're all adults and you money is a part of being an adult you got to know how to talk about it Okay, so watch the video for this lesson because I had I gave a, a 
a long explanation about the vocabulary, just one day dedicated to vocabulary. Um, but that's all on you for the grammar is what I'm here for. The grammar is what I'm here for. Unit nine, lesson B. In this case, the objective was to report questions. Report questions. Again, sometimes you hear questions on the news from a friend and you want to report it to somebody else. That's fine. Okay, now report questions. Remember, th there are three things you need to remember. Number one, shift back the verbs, okay? The same rule applies. You need to shift back the verbs. If it's still true in the present, that's fine, but you can still shift back if you'd like to. Number two, you need to use statement order. That means the subject is first and then the verb. Subject and then the verb. And the last thing you're going to use if in yes or no questions, okay? You can use another word instead of if, but we'll, we will, well, yeah, it's right here, weather. You can use weather. In this case, if and weather mean the same thing, except that weather just sounds a little more formal. Let me give you an example. If somebody asks you, um, can you dance? Um, my new friend asked me if I could dance. That's good. But I could also say, my new friend asked me whether I could dance. And that's, well, that's fancy. That's fancy, but it's not that common. If is more common. My, fr my new friend asked me whether I could dance. British accent, whether. My new friend asked me whether I could dance. Okay, did I follow the order? Of course, I changed the verb to can, to could. I used statement order, first the subject and then the verbs. And I use if or whether and yes or no questions. This is a yes or no question. Can you dance? Yes. Can you dance? No. All right. Let me, I, I want to hear you answer, or I want to hear you report this next question. Mm, let's see. Crazy, it's a, it's, a, it's a dumb question, but this is the first thing that came to my mind. Is it okay to go outside? He asked me, class, how would I report it? He asked me if, um, if it was okay to go outside. If it was okay to go outside. Good job. She followed the structure. She used if, then she put the subject and then the verb. Perfect. He asked me if it was okay to go outside. Okay, maybe you asked your doctor and your doctor is reporting after COVID. All right, one more, one more question. The ones with do and did are the most difficult ones, but I think you can do it. Do you like to save money? My dad asked me, class, can you complete this? Somebody besides Karina, Enrique, Alberto, Manu, Donna, Daniela, don't be scared. If I like save money. 
if I like to save money. Good. All right, now I'm gonna write two questions that are open questions. So remember with open questions, you do not use if. You, instead of if, you just use the question word, whether it's what, where, who, how, et cetera. Please report those three questions. So Ben, I see that you have some questions in the chat. Um, it's only passed. My friend asked me, where was I? Well, look, my friend asked me, where was I? Okay, now, that is okay, except for one thing. Remember that the subject goes first and then the verb. Where I was. Yeah, where I was. So my friend asked me where I was. That's it. And we changed R to was because, well, R is the present and was is the past. And I was is correct. You cannot say I were. So yes, was is the correct verb in this case. How old are you, Enrique? How would I report that? My new friend asked me, ask me how old I am. How old I am. Okay, cool. And what if you shift back the verb? How would it be? Oh. oh, no, I don't know. Change Sorry. M, change M. Shift back M. I was. Again, my new friend asked me how old I was. Good. And Karina, the last one, what time is it? He wanted to know what time was. He wanted to know to know what time was. Time was interesting. And where is it? Uh, time is it no? Ah uh, no 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 no. Time it was. Now. Okay. So in, in this case, Karina. Um, what time is the question word? Okay, okay. Yeah, but you still need a subject and it would be it. You know? Yes. Nice, nice, nice. My dad asked me what time it was. Exactly, Ben. Good. Now, he asked me if it would be okay to go outside. All right. Why it was? Well, first of all, your sentence sounds correct. Grammatically, it's correct. He asked me if it was okay, if it would be okay to go outside. But the, the this is the this is the thing. Will changes to would. But um, in in this sentence, I did not use would. So what happens is that is, am, or are changes to was or were. And that's why we use was in this sentence. Okay, uh, okay, yeah. All right, guys. Well, do you have any questions? No, teacher. No, Donna, how about you, Daniela? Questions? No. No, did you? Guys, Manu, Alberto, Enrique? No, I'm okay. Everything is okay. 
All right. There's a lot of information, guys. Um, I recommend that you check your notes. Something that always, always, always helps my students is that they just simply read the grammar chart many times. They repeat it. The market researcher, are you a spender or a saver? She asked me whether I was a spender or a saver. You can read it several times and then use your memory, read it, memorize it, and then say it out loud. It will help you a lot. The grammar chart, remember, it's just repetition. Repetition is key. Repetition is key, key, key to everything. Repetition is the foundation of learning. All right. Um, well, that'll be all for today. So I'm not going to use the last 10 minutes because I want this, this was a lot of information and I want you to, you know, relax and then maybe review yourself later on tonight or in the morning tomorrow. And remember, guys, if you have any doubts, you can send me a message. All right. But as of now, since there are no questions, I will see you tomorrow. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you, teacher. Have a good night, good too. Good night, everyone. Good night. See Bye. you. Take care.